All right, so it's about 4.03, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, if you have any uh, classmates or uh, friends, et cetera, who are getting here a little late, uh, do not worry. This uh, uh, program is going to be recorded. Um, it'll initially be archived on Facebook and then eventually on the STC Library YouTube page where we will have accurate captions up and it will be archived for you guys to view in the future. So First of all, let me welcome you to Why Volunteer. This is going to be a conversation about volunteering in your community, how that benefits the people around you and yourself when you give your time charitably. Um, my name is Heather Bobrowitz. I am the programming librarian here at STC, and I am thrilled to uh, present to uh, introduce our two presenters for the day. Um, first is going to be Marla Bautista. Marla is a uh, writer, a uh, speaker, and a volunteering advocate. Her passion is giving back to people in need. She's also the co-founder of the Bautista product project, a custom decor and apparel company, which uses a percentage of their profits to provide for homeless communities. She's enthusiastic about volunteering within the community and telling the stories of the people who are often unheard, and will be sharing that enthusiasm with us today. After Marla's talk, we will have a presentation about how you can get involved in our local community from Sabrina of the United Way. So with that, I'm going to turn this over to Marla for her presentation. Awesome. Thank you, Heather. Can you hear mm -hmm. me? Okay? I can hear you. Awesome. Thank you so much. I am so grateful to be here today um, and have the opportunity to speak to you all. My name is Marla Bautista, and I'd like your help. The word help means something that will never change. Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines help as giving support or assistance. To me, help means to heal, empower, love, and provide. Do you remember when you were younger and you tried to tie your shoes? First, you'd make one bunny ear. And just as you looped the second bunny ear, the first one would slip. You were frustrated and you needed someone to encourage you to keep trying. Someone did. Eventually, you got it. Later, you forgot you ever struggled to tie your shoes. That's what happens when someone helps you. You were healed, empowered, loved, and provided for. Everyone has needed help at some point in their lives. Me, I've needed my fair share of help as well. Surviving a tumultuous adolescence only to be thrown to the wolves as a young adult, I returned with lessons from the jungle. Lessons I never thought I'd learn from things I'd never thought I'd see. My childhood went from seemingly ordinary to tragic at a very young age. I was born in Gardena, California, the first child to both of my parents who were young and newly married. Unfortunately, after a few short years of marriage, they were divorced. I stayed with my mother and have visits with my father. My maternal grandmother helped raise me as my mother and I returned to her residence a short time after her divorce from my father. Both my father and mother remarried um, and had children in their new relationships. In 1989, I learned that my father died. I was six years old. My father's passing was the first of many trials I would face. My mother was diagnosed with breast cancer in the early 1990s. She had a double mastectomy early on in hopes of combating the vicious disease. My mother and my stepfather decided to move. California to Colorado was a scary move for me. New school, new friends, and not so new problems within my family. Shortly after moving, my grandmother visited Colorado as she made her way on a road trip across the country to Texas. My grandmother was the matriarch of our family. She kept us strong when times were tough. Her surprise visit to Colorado was much needed for all of us. My mother was no longer working and needed constant medical care. Her cancer had spread. My grandmother stayed for about a week before she headed to Texas. Um, I was the happiest when I was around my grandmother. She was not only my nurturer, but she was the woman who taught me to be strong in the face of adversity. 
I remember when she cleaned houses for the elitists in California, she would take me along. There, I learned how to work hard while building long lasting relationships. She was treated like a family member um, by many of her clients. They would cook her lunch, they would bring her gifts and do things for her that would make my heart smile. About a week after my grandmother arrived in Texas, my mother received a call. My grandmother was not well. She had cancer and no one knew. She lived her life normally while she secretly battled this disease. Our family drove to Texas to see her. When we arrived, she was not well. Not more than a week later, she succumbed to her illness. She passed away when I was nine years old. My world was dissolving in front of my young eyes. My Brock, my best friend, my confidant were gone. I was heartbroken. We traveled to California where her body was transferred for burial. Upon our return to Colorado, my mother's condition worsened. She was admitted into hospice to live out the rest of her days. Three weeks later, she died. April 18, 1993 and May 6, 1993. Two days I will never forget. The darkness cast a shell around my heart. I was numb, nine years old. Even today, I'm in disbelief. My everything was gone. I, I was nine. Um, I was left to live with my stepfather who abused me until I was an adult. I attempted to run away countless times to no avail. I reached out for help to no avail. I tried to protect my younger brother and sister from abuse to no avail. I wasn't sure what the plan was for my life, but it had to be better than this. I suffered for years without relief. At the age of 18, I was made homeless. I was thrown out onto the streets with nothing but a trash bag full of clothes. I had no car, I had no money, and I had no knowledge on how to be successful in the world alone. An abusive relationship ensued. Why? Because that was easy. That was something I was used to. I was abused. And that to me was easier than being in an uncomfortable or unfamiliar situation. I was scared. One could only imagine what it was like to be a teenager forced to survive without basic living essentials and no way to obtain them. I had to teach myself. And I did that by making mistakes repeatedly. I wandered the streets seeking something, a clue to who I was or what I should be. Living without a home didn't come naturally to me. I faced hurdle after unrelenting hurdle. I got jobs and I lost them. Having a job while living amidst instability was nearly impossible. At times, I didn't have a way to get to work or a cell phone to call if I were sick or would be late. When I was on the streets, I would eat at a local Catholic church. They served lunch almost every day. I would wait outside in the long line that wrapped around the building in hopes that there would be food left when I got to the front. Volunteers would come and pass out bags filled with hygiene items. They were such a blessing. I had the opportunity to get to know the volunteers and I learned that they did this without expecting anything in return. They used their own time and their own money without expecting anything. I was intrigued. I was intrigued by what they were doing and I wanted to help people, but at the time I just couldn't. The hardships that people face when they're homeless can be resolved easily in the lives of those not facing the same disparities. I slowly began to regain a sense of self, which helped me to become a more empowered version of myself. I was soon able to fulfill my obligations, my financial obligations. I was able to obtain housing and later, way later 
I was able to purchase things that I used to long for, like a bed, a television, and perfume. Soon after, I began to feel selfish. As I became more stable and more comfortable, there were still women like me who weren't. They didn't have a bed or a television or perfume. I found my purpose and my life began to look different. No, my life didn't magically get better, but the way I viewed it did. My new chapter was the beginning of my purpose. After being homeless, I realized the purpose of my life to provide for people in need. And I promised myself that if I ever overcame homelessness, that I would spend my life giving back to others, just as people did for me. I began doing this by providing small snack bags for people who lived in my neighborhood. I wrote entry-level resumes for individuals entering and re-entering the workforce. And I even occasionally brought sandwiches for homeless individuals I encounter. Help isn't a linear turn. There are millions of ways you can help others and the world we live in. Helping someone in need is more than just giving a dollar to a homeless individual or alerting someone when they've dropped their keys in the parking lot. Help can also be mentoring and advocating for children in underserved communities, planting and maintaining an urban garden, or helping provide um, community support for LGBTQ plus community members. To make our world better, we must do the work, have the hard conversations, roll up our sleeves, get dirty, and share our insight. Share the recipe. Having an old age recipe that your grandmother used to make is great, but sharing it is more remarkable. Allowing knowledge to die only ends a legacy. We don't want that. I don't want that. I want the work that I'm doing today to be talked about, taught, and passed on to people in the future. Our time on earth is limited. What we do with that time will determine how we'll be remembered. Um, a while ago, I was having a conversation with a local death doula. She said on their deathbed, so many people asked to be remembered kindly. They wanted their name to be memorialized with that of great creators, humanitarians, and leaders. Yet so many of them did not live the life worthy of that recognition. So they wish for a chance to go back, right? They want a chance to go back and do things differently. They want a chance to go back and make things better. But we all know that do-overs aren't possible, right? While you're here, you have an opportunity to help. Sheryl Sandberg said, leadership is about making others better in your presence, making others better as a result of your presence and making sure that impact lasts in your absence. Um, there are so many ways that we can help change the world for the better. Yes, you can help change the world. I know it sounds cliche, but it's true. Everything we do contributes to the evolution or detriment of us all. For example, planting a tree, you're helping reduce toxins, produce oxygen, and provide food for insects, animals, and even humans, right? Today, I wanna share a few ways you can help change our world for the better. But I want you to be forewarned, helping others will cost you. Though it won't always cost you money, your time and energy are often expended in the name of kindness. Many people have this impression that helping others shouldn't be of any inconvenience. That just simply isn't the case. Giving is, well, it's giving. You can help others by donating your time. Have a conversation with a homeless individual. Did you know that the feeling of belonging actually helps increase an individual's self-esteem. When you make eye contact and you engage in genuine dialogue with another individual, it makes them feel seen and included. One of the most significant inhibitors to the progress within homeless communities is actually the lack of acknowledgement. Many homeless uh, community members actually live out their days on the streets unnoticed, if they're lucky. In other circumstances, they're assaulted, berated, and ostracized. 
spend your time letting them know that they matter. A few ways that you can give your time as a volunteer is to volunteer hosting an event at a senior living center. Conduct a reading group at your local library. Write notes of encouragement to friends, coworkers, and anyone that you believe would benefit. Take care of animals at your local animal shelter. You can do more than just donate your time too. Make sure that you're using your skills. Your life experience, college education, and other abilities may be exactly what an individual or organization needs to be successful. As the needs of our communities evolve, so do volunteer opportunities. Virtual volunteer opportunities are actually abundant. Some can be found on websites such as volunteermatch.org or on LinkedIn. Volunteer Match is a great search engine um, for finding volunteer opportunities. It allows you to type in your interest, um, type in your location, and it'll help you match up with worthwhile opportunities. Volunteering isn't just good for others, though. It's also good for you, too. Volunteering looks good on you. And I don't mean the pomp of public recognition, gift cards, award ceremonies, and fancy dinners. Although those things are nice to have, at the end of the day, they're just things. One of the most significant benefits of volunteering are the health advantages of being a part of the good in the world. According to the Mayo Clinic, a few health advantages of volunteering are reduced blood pressure, longer life expectancy, and the reduced risk of depression. But you don't have to believe me. Try it for yourself. Try volunteering and see if it doesn't make you feel happy and more alive. You can volunteer alone or you can volunteer with a group of friends. They say friends make everything more fun, right? Um, so check out, find some organizations that offer group volunteer opportunities. Did you know that volunteering is actually good for your resume as well? The experience you gain as a volunteer is no different from the experience at your job. You are trained, provide a service, and you support others. There is one notable difference in volunteering. I'm sure you guys all know what that is. You don't get financially comp compensated, right? Um, but don't let that stop you. Just because you're not being paid doesn't mean you aren't working. So I've been asked, should you add volunteer experience to your resume? That's kind of a no-brainer. Absolutely, you should. Your training, your abilities, and your tasks should be highlighted in the experience section of your resume um, because that's experience. Consistent volunteer work should be placed in the experience section of your resume, but just make sure that you mention in the caption that this was a non-paid position. Um, you just want to, to, you don't have to say it was a volunteer opportunity, but do mention that it was a non-paid position. Um, furthermore, volunteering is actually a great way to get your foot in the door. If you want to check out a, a potential employer, you can offer your time as an intern, an extern, or just to obtain knowledge in your field. Um, you'll have the opportunity to learn, grow, and cultivate new relationships within a particular company. So a few ways you can volunteer your time while you're incorporating your skills are to volunteer as a photographer, a social media manager, a copywriter, a marketing manager, a grant researcher, a sports coach, a hairstylist, or a youth academic tutor. If you're volunteering for school credit, be sure that your facilitators or program director approve the opportunity that you've chosen. <laughs> you wouldn't wanna go put in all that work, right? only for your, your teacher or your professor to say, I can't give you credit for that. But make sure you log your hours as well. You can log them manually or on a via, um, on, on a provided um, volunteer management system. I like to use Track It Forward. It's an awesome volunteer management system and it's kind of free. So lastly, serving your community and your country helps um, personify the warrior ethos. As a military member, you can vol your volunteer work will help prepare your career forward as well. You can document your volunteer work on your OER or NCOER. Um, depending on the number of hours that you volunteered as a service member, you're eligible, you could be eligible for a volunteer service medal. 
Um, and that will be documented on your ERB and can be worn on your dress uniform. As a service member, you should consider volunteering at your local fire station, police station, military installation, or any other local emergency services. Um, you can also volunteer as a crossing guard at an elementary school or at a local community event. They're all great ways to volunteer your time and you get credit for it. Um, your presence alone makes your community stronger and more unified. So if you volunteered and you loved it and you want to make an even greater impact, consider starting your own nonprofit. A nonprofit organization is an organization that creates a social effect within a community. This includes religious services, human services, um, educational institution, youth groups, and you know, you get the idea, so much more. Um, you can start your nonprofit within a few months. Just visit your county or state's website um, to find out how you can start a local nonprofit, um, or you can visit irs.gov. They have a lot of great information there as well. Creating your own nonprofit can seem like a daunting task, however. Um, there's paperwork, there's building a team, and they're showing up for your community. But the reward of knowing that you're a part of the good in the world and you're changing, you're changing the lives of others is worth the effort, in, in my personal opinion. Um, if you're currently a business owner and you want to make an impact, put some pep in your step, right? PEP, P-E-P, -E is an acronym that I use to promote, engage, and partner with others. Using the PEP strategy increases visibility for your business while creating positive change. For example, your company provides branded water bottles for a back to school backpack giveaway. You're not only providing a product that will be used regularly by people in need, but you're also promoting your brand. So don't go overboard though, you know, trying to completely outfit school children in branded gear. Be tactful. Remember your company is there to help others. You can positively engage and partner with other organizations by providing a day of volunteering. Allow employees or students one paid day of volunteering. Pick one day per month, per quarter or year that your employees participate in a group volunteering activity. This is good for the organization, it's good for your company, and it's also good for your team members. As a business owner, you have a responsibility to help sustain the community in which you serve. It doesn't have to be a physical community, it can, it can be a virtual one as well. Um, so I want to know if you've ever heard of the Salesforce 111 philanthropic model. So it's a model that can and should be adopted by all corporations in our country. Again, that's my opinion. The 111 model is a way your business can make a lasting impact by pledging to donate 1% of your time, 1% of your profit, or 1% of your product. You're committing to improving your community's foundation of social impact continuously. If you're not ready to start volunteering, you can still positively impact our world. Promote and engage with people and organizations you know are doing the work. Simple acts such as on social media content help expand the organization's reach, which will help make the content accessible to more people. Also, leaving reviews boosts the organization's ratings on platforms like Google and great nonprofits. More ratings equal wider audience reach, which leads to more substantial results. Thus, you're making an impact. If you want to make a difference, but you don't know how, ask. Ask what's needed. By simply asking someone or an organization what they need, you're making a difference. However, be prepared to answer the ask. Being a part of the solution requires you to step into the unknown, willing to forge a path for those who will follow you. So I'm gonna ask you today, will you help? We all deserve a community filled with unity, respect, love, and inclusivity. Throughout my trials and tribulations, I have had mentors, counselors, and even random individuals who have offered guidance along my journey. These people have helped me see who I was and what specifically I was meant to be. Be the person you needed when you were younger. Empower those who will come behind you. 
whether those people are your friends, your family, or your peers, or they could be people you don't even know. Knowledge formulates ability and ability should be translated to action. Without action, our ideas are, uh, will remain stagnant. Will remain stagnant in our ideas, in our aptitude and in our evolution. So you know what, let's help us. Um, so finally, I wanna show you guys a quick video about my journey and how I serve my community. So I'm gonna see if I can share my screen really fast. Um, Heather, can I share my screen, please? You should be able to, okay. let me see here. Because that would be perfect. Let's see, share screen. It should be in the middle of the bottom of the screen. Yeah, it looks like it's disabled. Okay, let me see here. All panelists, there oh, we there go. We there we go, all set. <laughs> Awesome. Okay, so I'm going to share this quick video. I don't know if you guys can see it. Can you guys see my screen? Can you see it? We yeah, can. Can you hear it? Yeah, I can hear it. Okay, we can hear it. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for listening to my speech and I'm going to try to escape out of here and stop sharing my screen. I really appreciate you all for taking the time to hear me today and I hope that I was inspired or I hope I inspired some of you to kind of get out there and help make our world a better place. Thank you. Thank you so much, Marla. That was wonderful. Thank you. Okay, so next we have uh, Sabrina Lopez from the uh, United Way, who's going to give us a presentation about how you can start volunteering down here in the Valley. Hi, everybody. Thank you, Marla. That was beautiful. I loved your story. And I want to thank you for all the work that you've been giving back to your community as well. And everybody that's watching, I hope you guys have been inspired because I know that it inspired me even more. So thank you again. Um, I just want to say, uh, my name is Sabrina Lopez. I am from United Way of South Texas here, a nonprofit organization. I am the community relations here. Today actually marks my six month anniversary. So I'm a, I'm a baby here. I'm six months old. <laughs> um, I'm starting off. I'm learning as well. So I'm very blessed and grateful for for having a job that, that allows me to be able to contribute and help to my community. I've always, I knew I've always wanted to do something um, before. I used to work at HEB. I know all you, 
all you guys know the HEB crew. I don't know if some of you guys might be working there as well. I know I started off there at a very young age, but um, I'm here now. I was donating to United Way of South Texas every week on my payroll deduction. I was donating and, and to be able to work for this nonprofit organization, to be able to see behind the scenes in our events and what we do is just so beautiful and I'm very, very blessed. Um, I want to start off by sharing a, a PowerPoint on, on our organization, what we offer and the, let me go ahead and try sharing the screen. Okay. I think I don't even know if this is the slide. Sorry. <laughs> I can go to the slide. Okay. Getting started. So the importance of community service. Um, again, my name is Sabrina. I'm community relations and public sector for for United Way of South Texas. I want to talk to you guys today about what we offer here at United Way, um, the benefits for volunteering, and not just our organization, but every every other nonprofit organization that RGB does have, um, the benefits for our organizations, and how to be able to, to look out for volunteer opportunities through a website, volunteersouthtexas.org. About United Way of South Texas. So over 1,000 volunteers run United Way. Because of you guys, because of our volunteers, we're able to raise more funds. Now, United Way, we partner with 22 other agencies that we fund for. They are as well nonprofit organizations, and um, I will go ahead and speak a little bit more on that right now. We're able to review effectiveness of agencies every year, distribute, distribute funds because of you all's help. Uh, volunteers and agency deliver services, including the following after school youth programs. Um, these youth programs are through Boys and Girls Club. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that. Um, with that, we, we do Boys and Girls Club. We have for Edinburgh, McAllen, Mission, Far and San Juan. I myself, when I was when I was a little girl, I was enrolled in Boys and Girls Club. And let me tell you, the new friends that I've made there is just it's, it's awesome. It's a good after school program for our youth. Um, organizations like shelters for domestic, for victims of domestic violence and, and homeless. Uh, VITA, our free income tax preparation services that we do offer here from United Way of South Texas. Back to school shopping spree, an event that again, we do fun. Um, end of life care services, alcohol and drug addiction counseling, day of caring, school supplies, and education council. This is just the list of, of, of how you can be able to help through our community. Now, starting off with one of our programs here at United Way of South Texas, it's a volunteer income tax assistance known as VITA. Now, what we do in this program is you can volunteer for this as well as we prepare income tax for residents here in Hidalgo and Star Counties that make an income of $60,000 or less. Yes, that's, you heard right. You are, you would have a chance to be able to help and prepare income tax assistance for, for residents here. We go through trainings um, to be able to prepare you for, for meeting with our clients. And just in this year overall, we were able to save $480,000 in savings. I know a lot of, I know a lot of, maybe your parents, I know my parents used to do this as well. When they needed to file for their income tax, you would have to pay somebody to do it for you. But for here, we do it free. As long as you are paying six, as long as you are getting paid $60,000 uh, or less. Um, as you can see here are areas that we have helped out in the community. Um, we were able to help out the number of families for, for the areas and how much money they were able to get back in their refunds. And we were able to give back in tax assistance $5 million in 
$21. So that's really, really good. That's amazing. And we were able to help 2,402 families here in the RGB with free income tax assistance. So if you guys are interested in something like this, I know there's this would be very helpful and somebody that's going for accounting, business, in one of those categories, this would be a very great opportunity for you guys to, to be able to volunteer and do. Our back to school in style shopping spree. So this right here, as you can see, these are all volunteers. I know things have been very, very tough during the pandemic, but um, before the pandemic hit, we were doing, well, we, we still were able to do back to school and style shopping spree. We only had a couple of volunteers for Target, but before, as you can see in this picture, we've had so many volunteers um, um, help out with, with our youth. And what we do for this program is, um, it was established by United Way in 1996. And what we do is we help over a thousand middle school students we give them, we provide them a gift card. We provide them haircuts, personal hygiene items, school attire, school supplies. And what the youth does is they are selected by a counselor. And as a volunteer, you are paired up with this student and you are able to, to use their gift card, shop for school clothes for the new school year, be able to get them school supplies. You are able to help help them do this before the school year. And I think it's an amazing opportunity to do. Um, you're helping our, our youth that, you know, that have more needs than others. And I think it's just a beautiful opportunity to, to get invested in. Moving on to another program that United Way of South Texas does is Day of Caring, Project Fresh Start. And what we do is we distribute school supplies for freshmen in high school. We've been doing this since 2011. Um, it's a $188,777 investment. And the, the school districts that you see here are the districts that we are helping um, in Hidalgo and Star counties as well. Now moving on, in order to be able to this is just a little sneak peek of what United Way of South Texas does and what we offer and the events that you are able to have an opportunity eventually to, to volunteer for. But we do have, we, do our, we are partnered with 22 different agencies and they all have different categories as to what you're helping out with. And a lot of these agencies do need volunteers. We have American Red Cross, we have um, Goodwill, we have Boys and Girls Club, we have Women Together, victims that are um, of domestic violence, we have Girl Scouts, we have so many agencies. We have so many agencies, sorry about that. We have so many agencies that, that we're able to help and we are not aware of that. So with Volunteer South Texas, you make a profile, you create an account, and with that, I will be actually going over with you guys after this PowerPoint shortly, I will be going over and the process and the steps and how to use this website. But you just put in your, your information here and you're basically getting access to the needs that are that nonprofit and, and agencies are, are needing for, for volunteers. Now benefits of community service for volunteers. So volunteering is important. I can't stress this enough. There's like I've mentioned, like as Marla has mentioned, it's very important and you are making a huge difference, whatever the case is. Um, it gives you an opportunity to develop soft and or hard skills. And as she has mentioned before as well, I know you're not getting paid, but this is, this is basically training that you're getting for your next step in life. It's um, whether it's accounting, whether it's web design, communication, your, your networking, your team building, computer programming. Um, and 
Again, I'm gonna go over this with in Volunteer South Texas when I explain a little bit more, but depending on what you wanna get into volunteering for, there's many different types of, of choices that you can get. Um, you explore your interests and causes and you eventually can find a passion in, in one of these, you know, if you're volunteering for, if you're just trying to get hours and you happen to volunteer for an agency, and you happen to fall in love for what they stand for, for what they do, it, grow, it grows a passion. And I know for me that it was one of those things as I grew older and I was able to, to understand more of the needs that other people need more help, I wanted to be able to help. So I think that's very important. It improves your health and well being, strengthening of the body, your improved mood. Um, decreased feelings of isolation if if you feel like if you feel like you are attending school you feel like okay well I don't you know I don't get along with or not even get along you're just anti-social whatever it is you volunteering you're you're connecting with other people that have the same um that have the same interest and any with you so I I think that's very important it gives you a better feeling of what you're doing. And the service record on a resume for, for job applications and leadership positions, it's just really, really good. Um, when you're able to apply, like Marla was talking before too, these are the things that are important and they're gonna be seeing this, whoever is hiring you. Like I said, it's part of like a training that you're going to be going through um, while you're volunteering for whatever category. So. I think it's very important and, and um, it will help you for your future, for future references. It will help you for your job and it looks really, really great. So I really, um, I really think that it's an important thing to do moving forward. Now, benefits of community service for organizations. I do have a quote from the Salvation Army um, and how it's important for not only your community, but for the organizations that you're doing this for. Um, it says, it takes an army of volunteers to empower the Salvation Army's success to help those most in need in Hidalgo County. From serving meals in our shelter kitchen to working in our Angel Tree Warehouse to provide over 2,200 children with brand new toys and clothes, or ringing a bell at a red kettle at Christmas. Last year, volunteers contributed 36,352 hours to our programs. And that is just for one organization. This is just for one organization, the events that happen throughout the year. They're needing um, a lot of help with things that they're trying to do for our community, events that they're trying, uh, trying to, to make, um, the kitchen, they serve meals every year, every day, every year, 24 seven. I, I spoke with, with Maggie from the Salvation Army and she, so such a sweet lady, she's very dedicated and she works there 24 seven. She says, we are never, during the pandemic when, when jobs were letting go of people, um, there was a lot of families that had nowhere to stay um, Salvation Army was able to help them through that. They were able to help to provide meals. And although a lot of jobs were closing down and you know nobody was working, the Salvation Army was still open to the public, to whoever needed the help. So I think that's very beautiful. And um, to be able to be a part of an organization like this and help, you're doing so much more. And um, I think it's, I can't stress this enough how important it is, how for, for organizations, I've, this is me just saying 22 partner agencies that, that we are partnered with, United Way of South Texas. There is more out there that we, you know, that a lot of people don't know about. And it just means that we need more volunteers to be able to be committed, committed and, and help out for our community. Now, I do want to, thank you for that. I do want to really quick go on 
Volunteer South Texas and show you guys a process and an, an idea of how to of how to go about our right here. So if you make an account, you have to create an account. It will show you what's required to sign in. Of course, you're going to need your name, your date of birth, gender. Um, it after after all of the required information, it's going to ask you your your interest. Okay, well, what exactly do you want to volunteer? And are you interested in helping out serving hot meals for for like the Salvation Army? Do you want to volunteer for? Okay, well, we go over here to needs. Once you make your profile, you click on needs right here, and it will show you every organization here in the RGB or close by to you, depending on where you would like to volunteer, it will show you what they're offering and what they need help in and what they, why they need their volunteers. So for example, they need a volunteer for a vet clinic if anybody is interested or an animal lover. I am a huge animal lover. I don't know if I can volunteer at a vet clinic because I get really, really sad and I, I get very emotional. I'm not an emotional person, but I do, I will cry for a cat or a dog. Like it's crazy. It sounds silly, but that is something that I it, it gets to me um, right here. You click on it. You you view the details. It gives you the description. Volunteers are needed for Palm Valley Animal Society's clinic. If you're interested, please click here. See the guidelines. Um, on the side here, it says right here, volunteer spots remaining for. It gives you a lot of detailed information. You go back, you're not interested in being a volunteer for a vet clinic. Okay, well, right here, uh, they're looking for a licensed medical professional, gift your skills as a nurse or EMT. And this is all volunteer opportunities. They sound like real job titles, but this is what I mean when you're, when you volunteer and you're at the same time getting trained and it will help you out in the long run when you're applying for your career, whatever it is, it's going to help you and it's going, it's, it's going to train you for, for future references. I'm going to go ahead and just move down a little bit here um, just to give you a little more intel of, of, of all the needs. This is needs that organizations are, 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 are needing volunteers for. And this is three pages, second page, there's more, there's actually more pages there. So as you continue to look, whatever, whatever you, whatever your interests are, this has plenty of opportunities for you guys. And if you need to track your hours, or if you just need more, more than a, um, a need, there's events also, there's agencies as well. Right here, it will show you different types of organizations. Scrolling up, if you go to add hours on top, you keep track of your hours of what you're volunteering for. It says here, are these hours in reference to a need you responded to on this site? You press yes, you select your need and your hour details, and then you submit. And it's just easy as that, guys. Um, also right here, it shows you your profile, a volunteer schedule, your team's qualifications, um, tracking your hours. So that pretty much sums up. It's very, you know, basic on how to how to go about using Volunteer South Texas. It's you're just signing in, clicking on what are your interests for 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 volunteering opportunities and i can't stress it enough on how important it is um, to our community and what we need for yourself as well it it makes you a a better person and it you learn a lot i know it sounds very cliche but i didn't take as many opportunity uh, volunteer opportunities as i should have when i was younger and now just looking at what these organizations offer and how they they are very helpful to, to our communities, to your neighbor that you don't know what they're going through, but that's what we're here for. Um, United Way of South Texas, all these other organizations that, that we find, that's exactly what we're here for. And if you guys need any 
have any questions or anything like that, you can reach out to me here and I could be more than happy to help you guys out with whatever, whatever it is that you guys need. Um, I want to thank you guys so much for having me here. And I want to say also thank good, good luck to this semester <laughs> and in your school year. So thank you for that. Thank you so much, Sabrina. So that was a very in, uh, informative uh, presentation on the volunteer opportunities we have down here. Um, I do have a question for you. The, um, does the United Way have a lot of virtual um, volunteer opportunities? Because I've noticed that that seems to be a big thing right now because of folks um, you know, wanting to, to do things from home and everything to stay safe. Virtual, we don't at the moment, but we did have it before when we had our VITA program. Um, it was very hard to get volunteers and trainings going on. So we did have virtual trainings on, on phone calls to make to our clients, but at home. Um, so that was for that was the only virtual thing that we had for United Way of South Texas. At the moment, no, but we will be sure to always be keeping Volunteer South Texas updated and everybody else. Okay, cool. Um, I was going through and looking at a few different sites and I saw some on uh, Red Cross, I believe has a few and uh, the National Cancer Society has a few. So if some of you are looking for virtual ones that you can do from home, um, I'd suggest going to those sites and checking those out and seeing if they have those available for you. But but yeah, for everything else, that volunteer portal is just so cool to find it all is, the different very, opportunities very and everything. Easy. It's very easy. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Well, I think that is going to wrap up the presentation part of our uh, our event here. Um, but if anyone has any questions, um, we're going to uh, move on to that part. Feel free to put any of them in the Q&A to make sure that we see them, or you can pop them in the chat and I'll try to keep track. Um, I do have a question from Dr. Bean. Um, what do you say to individuals who say, I am too busy and I don't have the time to volunteer? Marla, do you want to take this one? <laughs> um, yeah, sure, I can. Um, you know, I've heard that a lot, of course. I've been volunteering for well over a decade nonstop. And I've heard a lot of times that they're too busy to volunteer. And I ask, how much time can you offer? How much time are you willing to volunteer? Um, as a photographer for an organization, we usually ask that a volunteer can give us an hour to three hours per month. So if you think about that, that's shorter than three Netflix shows. You can donate three Netflix shows of your time in a month. Um, so I definitely think that there are a lot of opportunities um, that sometimes they're just onesie twosie opportunities, um, like they're like with the SPCA. Um, like you were saying, Sabrina, going to the, the animal shelter, you can help walk dogs and cats and um, you can help clean their cages. And that's just those limited time opportunities. So definitely for people that don't have a lot of time on their hands, find a volunteer opportunity that won't take a lot of time. There are a lot of opportunities out there. They're unique. Um, like they said, go to the United Way website, go to volunteermatch.org um, because they have volunteer opportunities in in Texas, in New York, in Florida, and they have a lot of virtual opportunities that may actually line up with your curriculum. So you can find something that you can do online that won't take much of your time. Um, so that's my answer to that. Awesome. So I see um, on the chat box that you're asking how you can reach out to me locally. Um, I'm going to be putting in the United Way of South Texas phone number on the chat box, and I'm going to be putting in my email as well. So if you guys want to send an email with any questions that you have, if you want more information, I can give you. Let me go ahead and post that right now really quick before... All right. Well, while Sabrina's doing that, um, we did have a question come in the Q&A. Uh, Maria Flores is asking, um, I'd like to know how you can land a stable job with an organization. Other than volunteering, what else are they looking for? And does this differ between for-profit and nonprofit organizations? What do you ladies think? 
I mean, you can work for you can work for a nonprofit organization and be paid a salary or hourly just as um, mm -hmm. with a for profit organization. Um, and so what I always tell people is get your foot in the door, um, get to know people like at the United Way, if you go and you start volunteering there um, and a job opportunity opens up, they're going to look at you first. Mm -hmm because you have already been there serving. And so I always tell potential employees, um, that is the greatest way to get your foot in the door, even in your field of expertise, in your professional field. For me, I um, went to school for journalism and ended up getting my bachelor's in communications. So what a great idea for me to go volunteer at a radio station, a TV station, or do guest blog posts for another company. And then all of a sudden they're saying, hey, we want you to write for for us, you know, as a contract writer, you know, that gets your foot in the door. So always be open to volunteering your time, because like I said, it's not just good for them. It's good for you too. taking internships as well. I have some coworkers here at United Way that they just needed hours. They just needed volunteer hours. So they had to do internships and just working here. It, kind of, it landed them a job as well because they saw the work ethic in, in you and they were like, you know what? not even going for the degree that they, you know, and I thought it was awesome that they were able to still work, work and find the job with that experience alone. But it really does show a lot. Um, and they will see that too. So it will pay off. I can speak to that a little bit too, because I, I have a background in public libraries. And I know that public libraries love hiring their volunteers. Like we love volunteers and we love we love them doing the work voluntarily, but we also love uh, hiring volunteers because they're already familiar with the library, with the people, with the process and everything. And that that's a big thing is if you can get your, your foot in the door, you can make some connections and people see you around, that's always a good way to, uh, to get hired on full time. So, actually, Heather, that was actually one of my favorite volunteering opportunities was at the library. I was a uh, the reading group leader for a toddler reading group. So Aww. I just read books to the toddlers. And yes. so we do our uh, dancing before we'd read. And it was so much fun. And then we do a craft after the yes. best time ever. And we always had snacks. I love yes. <laughs> uh, I was a children's librarian for a while. We are always happy to have volunteers come and help us wrangle those toddlers because it's a lot. <laughs> so nowadays you may be more uh, likely to be uh, shelf reading or working in a book, the bookstore or something like that. But when uh, programs start being more in person, um, yes, 100%, we need those volunteers to help us with those Rainbow Tris kids. <laughs> so um, I don't see any more questions in the chat and it looks like we're hitting five o'clock here. So I think that's gonna be it for us. Thank you so much again, Marla and Sabrina for your time and your energy and your inspiration to get us out there volunteering. Um, so as as this webinar ends, you guys are going to get the opportunity to fill out a uh, survey, uh, letting us know what you think. I would really appreciate it if you did that for us. And again, thank you so much for uh, coming and thank you for uh, to our presentation, our presenters for their presentations. <laughs> thank you. Uh, it was nice meeting you guys. Thank you. Nice meeting you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Yes. Bye.